I've been making music and making visuals for a number of years and around about four or five years ago I was actually collaborating with Phil for a different project for the Strand Cinema Project. He sent over the music and just asked me, you know, what I like to kind of make visuals for. So that left everything completely wide open, which I really enjoy as well. Phil had the idea to basically work on something that looks at the future. I wanted people to think about the relationship between nature and technology, put it in the context of the past, the present, the future. The way that I wanted to do that was have the actual visual cues as, as the nature element, but also bring in new technologies that kind of allow us to see and perceive nature and the world through a different lens. What I also wanted to do is to have a collaboration, not just with me and Phil, but with me and the technology. The technology that I used, which was Stable Diffusion, which is an AI text prompt based technology, that allowed me to do that. It allows you to perceive worlds that aren't there. You're making up your own worlds, you're, you're dreaming, you're imagining, and you're having that collaboration uh, with, with the AI, with the computer. And I found that really, really interesting. I wanted the end of the show to just blow people's minds, to go, what just happened there? there there's so many ways that you can shape and form what the AI will give you at the end. And it's a language that you need to understand, and it's a language that takes time to work out. Uh, it's a communication between you and a computer. Once you actually put in that prompt, you then maybe like run one frame, and you, you see what your starting point is. And it's like, nah, that's not going to work. You go back and you look at your prompt, and you, you go again. You change something, and you go again. You try to, and you're just constantly iterating until you get something that you think might work. Then you might run that for 100 frames then you kind of look at each frame and say, okay, I, I like the way this is going, or I don't. If you don't, you scrap it, and you either start again, or you rethink your process, you rethink your rules, your, your guides, uh, your prompt. If you move one thing, it has a domino effect on everything else. So it is quite intricate. The amount of technology that's needed to make this work is quite advanced. For me to make these visuals, I had to basically use a server on the other side of the world, <laughs> a really advanced you know, computer that I just wouldn't be able to afford myself to kind of do a lot of the processing part. Eventually, I was really, really happy with uh, where I was starting to get, and then I started generating around about eight or 9,000 frames, um, which took a couple of days, just rendering 24 hours a day. At one point, I had three different computers <laughs> rendering <laughs> at a time, just so I had uh, you know, a lot of content to kind of look at and, and to go through. I probably generated something like 30 different videos. Most of them were AI based, but there was other ones as well. So eventually I started getting really, really close to where I wanted to be. And then at that stage, I was showing Phil what I had done. And then he would kind of look at that and maybe give some feedback. And then I would adapt accordingly. I was really happy with how the video turned out. I genuinely was. The way that this technology works is you're really not sure what you're going to get. And I absolutely love that. You're essentially letting the computer dream. The beauty of working with Phil in this project was he kind of left things quite wide open and I like working that way. If you watch that animation, it never repeats. Every frame is completely unique and different. If I wanted to go back and render that again, I, would, I wouldn't get the same result. So that's completely unique. It's a new technology, it's a new art form. It's something that I've never kind of seen before, really. It's really, really interesting and it's fascinating, but we're only at the start of it. I was obsessed with like you know, hip hop and early electronica, and a lot of that music was made by using samplers. I can see a, a similarity there between kind of early sampling and, and what this AI technology is doing. You had something that was already there, and you sampled it, you chopped it up, and you rearranged it and made it your own. Um, and there was always a grey area around that, right? There's, there, there still is, you know, is it okay to take something that someone else has made and chop it up and rearrange it and call it your own? If you kind of look at the vastness of, of sampling and what that opened up and the musical genres that, that came about and the, the, the whole music scene and the culture behind that and everything that that has made, that's a beautiful thing. And without that, it wouldn't have existed. So with this AI technology, there's quite a lot of ifs, buts and maybes about the technology at the minute, but I think it's a beautiful thing if it's used correctly and it's used as another tool in your arsenal.